Hello, my name is Greg Crouch, and welcome to our web event on using a modular approach in automotive production line connectivity and configuration. The manufacturing line assembling today's highly complex products has evolved over the years and typically follows the flow you see in this slide. During the board assembly stage, today's machines can place solder paste and components upon unpopulated circuit cards with great accuracy. Reflow soldering is the most common method of attaching surface mount components. The goal of the reflow process is to melt the solder and heat the joining surfaces without overheating and damaging the electrical components. After inspection, which may be commonly performed manually, wave flow soldering is often used for components such as large power devices and high pin count connectors. With today's modern assembly systems, one may question why the need for product test. Ask any production test engineer and they will say they only wished it was that easy. Cracks in solder during the fabrication process can occur and are usually caused by stress on the solder. The result can cause a loss in conductivity. Cavities or pores in the solder can be caused by contaminated surfaces, insufficient flux, and insufficient preheating. Improper solder temperature or conveyor speed can cause undesired thicknesses. If the solder is too thin, then is it susceptible to stress. If the solder is too thick, then unwanted shorts and bridgings can occur. As you can guess, a lot of things can go wrong with building PCBs. As most of you listening to this webcast also know, testing during the production process ensures process consistency and ensures a good working product reaches the customer. Some of the test methods used to ensure a quality product build include x-ray, in-circuit test, and functional test. Automotive component suppliers are continually looking for ways to improve test efficiencies as they serve broader sets of customers and more complex application requirements. The purpose of this webcast is to explore steps to configuring those high volume, high mix test standardizations along the production line and how addressing interfacing from the measurement instrument all the way to the device under test I.O. pin offers a head start to success. We will also present a case example to modularizing board and production level functional test. Probably one of the most challenging tasks for test engineers is getting access to enough test points on the PCBs in order to achieve full electrical test of all the nets on the printed circuit board. Shrinking packaging technologies, greater IC integration and functionality, higher pin counts, and reduced product footprints have led to ultra miniaturization. Many of today's PCBs are very complex high density interconnect boards that use blind and bury vias, as well as smaller tracks which have tighter spacing and less copper available on the board surface for electrical test access. This trend seems to accelerate for higher volume products which place a premium on small size and low power consumptions. The effectiveness of traditional in-circuit testing diminishes as the physical test access is lost. And it is for this reason that test engineers have a renewed interest to augment in-circuit test with unpackaged assembled board level test in addition to the more traditional finished product functional test. It's not surprising that the evolving technology requirements just described in the previous slide are requiring manufacturing managers to adapt to new business economic drivers. For example, many automotive component suppliers juggle a combination of outsourced versus internal manufacturing not to mention multi-site manufacturing and frequent manufacturing location changes. The product volume and mix always contribute their own issues to line optimization. For example, does the line focus upon automated or operator-driven operation? Manufacturing skill levels at factories often vary and must be addressed by the test system configuration and user interface. These and the other factors combined place conflicting demands on an evolving manufacturing line and integrators building and deploying turnkey automated test equipment as well as internal test engineering teams who manage these high cost capital resources really are struggling to satisfy the fast changing business environment. To try and roll the many challenges I've described into one statement, it would be a sentence that says, the increased device complexities and technology convergence 
is driving test systems throughout the manufacturing process to become more flexible and more modular, while cost pressures are demanding longer system lifetimes. By driving modular test architectures earlier into the production line, managers can reduce design and deployment time and potentially minimize cost. An additional added value as a result includes potentially achieving expanded throughput and accuracy. We at CircuitCheck observed PCI extensions for instrumentation, PXI as commonly known, move to the forefront in industry for product level functional tests. With PXI, we can select measurement modules from a number of vendors and integrate them into a single PXI system. There are thousands of module types available today. We're finding now that PXI can also be used to help us modularize test systems that live earlier in the production process, such as board level functional tests and even ICT type testing. Relative to those traditional closed architecture manufacturing test systems that have traditionally been used for ICT and board level functional tests, PXI's continued growth in product offerings is allowing us to leverage PXI throughout the entire manufacturing process line. Preserve the time in our seminar, let's, let's focus our discussion on some steps to building these types of test systems in a way that helps simplify device under test interfacing and the instrument to device under test cabling. Let's take an example where we have a core set of PXI instruments, such as a DMM, a switch, an RF signal generator, that we want to be able to leverage across several product types. In the early evolution of PXI, a test fixture system interface to a product was often a simple matter of selecting NIPXI instruments and then simply directly cabling them together. The complexities today of cabling to PXI instruments, coupled with hours spent wiring and debugging, simply do not align with many test engineer project demands. So how does one ensure robust connectivity to the product while also achieving the modular approach goals that we've been talking about? The most simplified approach would be to mount a modular receiver connector directly to your instrument rack. Instruments are then connected to the back side of the receiver connector. From this point, it's a matter of creating a connector and cross cable for each duct being tested. When building a simple duct cabling interface such as this, it is important to select an interconnect that can provide both channel depth and the power needs for test completeness. An example modular receiver connector may include this one from Mac Panel called the Apex. Pin diameters are one millimeter versus 0.6 millimeter diameter as found in most connectors. This allows for 3x increase in pin strength. The one millimeter pins of Apex also allow for current carrying capacities up to 5 amps. A second approach is view a form of mass interconnect. A mass interconnect is a rugged and modular interconnection device that can allow for more flexibility versus the single receiver approach just described. In this example, you can see that the receiver is attached to the front of the instrumentation system. The receiver incorporates rugged connector modules that are designed for a very high cycle count. Typically, all of the I.O. from all the instruments will be connected to the receiver connector modules, effectively creating a large and customer-defined plug-in socket. The plug side, or interchangeable test adapter, ITA as it is called, is a frame that is configured to accept the mating connector modules to those in the receiver and will be attached to a test adapter or fixture of some kind, depending on the application requirements. Connection between the receiver and ITA is achieved by rotating an engagement handle that's typically found on the right side of the receiver. This is a very rugged, reliable, and versatile method of connecting up to thousands of different signal types in a single operation that takes just a few seconds. To truly realize the performance potential of the PXI platform, you need an interface that eliminates as many cables as possible, thus eliminating the costly design and build processes. It also helps with performance problems synonymous with cabling such as crosstalk, signal losses, and skew. Here's an example third-party interconnect product we have used at CircuitCheck called Scout. It helps to eliminate cables between the PXI instruments and the system's interface. It replaces the cables with connection modules that attach directly to the NIPXI instruments, 
thus allowing you to replace the cables with rigid PCB connectivity. These connection modules are known as direct access kits or DACs. Here are some examples of typical DACs. The advantage of replacing cables with a standard module can help in a lot of ways. Similar instruments will have identical performance at the system interface level. One can easily remove your PXI instruments and replace them in a few minutes without disturbing cables because there's just not that many cables. And since there are not that many cables being disturbed, PXI instruments can be transported between identical systems very, very easily. CCL learned that one customer saved 24 days on a duplicate project build using this approach versus a traditional method of a completely cabled mass interconnect. We found it to be efficient to use DAC adapters to incorporate custom circuitry such as LVDS, isolation to automotive grade signals, and signal deamplification. If you wish to produce your own module, DAC connector schematic layouts are available within National Instruments NI Ulti Board and National Instruments NI Multisim Design Suite. We have discussed two methods of connecting a receiver to your instruments. Let's now review modular approaches to connecting to your product under test. On the front of a modular mass interconnect, an engineer has two common options for device under test connectivity. One option is a cable that connects to remote or distributed devices under test. In the case of using a cable, and similar to the direct approach discussed in the previous slide, it's important that a rugged connector be used at the test system to ensure the reliability of frequent connects and disconnects over the life of the system. The picture shown here depicts the receiver test adapter to the PXI instruments. The interface test adapter, or ITA as it's called, will often connect to modular enclosures per product. Similar to our very first example, a cable can then be used to connect direct to the product under test. For the most robust connectivity to the finished product, or to board level assemblies, a second option is to use a test fixture. Test fixtures are often used on board level or finished product test. In the picture on the left, you see an edge connector connection to the device under test. The picture on the right is the back side of the fixture showing the mass interconnect interface test adapter. The other common fixture interface used for board level test is to fabricate a pin based fixture to directly touch probe points on the circuit card assembly. These probe points may be on the bottom, top, or both sides of the printed circuit board. This is a short video of a real world fixture. A reliable, high volume, long life fixture can be very heavy. What you're looking at is the front and side and rear views of a fixture with the mass interconnect, jumper plate probe pin registration, the probe guide plate, as well as push button fingers. Inside many fixtures you'll find conditioning circuitry and airflow control. This is another short video of two real world fixtures. The first configuration is for dual testing using a single set of instrumentation resources. You'll see the pneumatic regulators and the latch control on the air cylinders on this very complex fixture. This last short video shows how test fixtures can be modularized to help with multi-product testing. In this video, the fixture is configured as a drop-in, and each drop-in can be interchanged depending upon product type. Such a setup allows the core test fixture to be reused among multiple product types, thus saving cost. CircuitCheck is one of the largest manufacturers of in-circuit, functional, and custom test fixtures for automated test equipment. To conclude our web seminar, let's now take a case study example. I will quickly share a case study example of a modular system circuit check delivered to a Tier 1 automotive supplier that encompasses all of the modular components discussed earlier. The customer's RFQ called for a test system that could be supported globally and allow for growth as product volume increased. They requested the system to be able to test both at the component board level and at the product level. Also important to the customer was that the test system include traceability of product and product test results. 
This was accomplished with an electronic assembly barcode. A barcode label resided on the module assembly. The barcode was also written into memory on the module by way of Bluetooth. For reference, this is the procedure list that the customer's manufacturing test technician was to follow. After loading the product, the tester was to automatically lock a lid over the product. After checking for opens and shorts, power was applied to the battery line and the accessory line. Full functional testing then commenced to determine pass or fail of the product. This is the list of PXI instrumentation required to perform all of the tests. As you can see, we filled up our PXI chassis with a variety of PXI modules provided by National Instruments. The circuit check solution included a standard based platform design with drop in replaceable product interfaces as discussed earlier. It also included a pre designed pneumatic, power distribution, and safety subsystem. Each system was able to be configured in one of three sizes single, double, and triple enclosure. A single enclosure configuration supported one to detachable fixture and is used for low volume or low complexity testing where the required instrumentation will fit in a single rack. A double enclosure system supports one larger or two smaller detachable fixtures and is being used for mid volume and mid complexity testing. The triple enclosure accommodates up to three fixtures and provides space for a large instrument set for higher volume, high complexity applications. As you can see in these CAD drawings, each test fixture included an RF enclosure to ensure a noise-free environment. This slide shows a bulleted list of test capabilities. The key benefit of building upon a modular instrument and a modular interconnect approach is that a user needs only to procure the test capacity they need while growing or reducing tester capabilities without changing the architecture. To facilitate test program compatibility and equipment utilization, CircuitCheck leveraged National Instruments test stand to build the software, and it was adapted to run only those tests in the program that can be supported with the given hardware and software configuration of the target tester. There was no need to create custom test programs designed for the configuration of each tester on the production floor. With a default common base and set of resources and scalable interconnect, the customer was able to evolve their test systems to be highly scalable and to satisfy diverse test requirements using a single compatible platform that supports multiple pin board types and independent hardware options. Software plugins can be used to expand the capabilities of the tester. In fact, the same tester with only a few changes has now been deployed earlier in the production line as a board level programming station. Benefits of this customer's implementation paralleled our value slide discussed earlier. Such an approach delivered lower training and programming cost because operators only have to learn one test system and develop one test program. Another benefit was higher equipment utilization rates because a single test system can be used for multiple test applications. Finally, the approach delivered higher equipment value because the tester can be configured as a board level test system all the way to a high performance finished product test platform. The last thought to leave you with from this web seminar, be sure to think ahead. Test system design and deployment success is only as good as your plan. Before selecting your complement of NIPXI instruments, clearly define your intended use, your test requirements, and your design plan. This will help minimize challenges you face in the design and build stages. It will also assist in code layout and design outputs. A well thought out plan for your system design will greatly simplify validation and verification of the system later on before deployment, along with a more simplified IQ and OQ process. This seminar shared how building functional test systems at the board and product level based upon a modular approach can reduce design and deployment time while helping to minimize cost. CircuitCheck supports all aspects of the system development, including electrical and mechanical design, software development, fabrication, systems integration, and support. Thanks for listening and watching this web seminar.